Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to color grade in Final Cut Pro 10. And this tutorial is going to be different from the other ones you've seen because I'm not just going to tell you to mess around or play with different settings. I'm actually going to be showing you a set in stone method that you can follow when you're color grading absolutely any shot. And this will be extremely useful for you because if you are new to filmmaking or you're just trying to step up your color grading now, you're going to learn a lot because I'm going to be going over the steps to color correct and color grade but also some of the terminology and things that you need to understand when you go out on your own and you start color grading more footage. So you read that title correctly, we're not going to be using color finale, this is going to be plug in free color grading done all in Final Cut Pro 10 using the color board that comes with it. The only thing you need to download is these two adjustment layers right here, the base correction and the look grade, and I'll have those linked down below. Now it's not mandatory, but I highly recommend you do this because it is absolutely free and it'll make your life a ton easier when you're grading clips and when you're bringing together your overall video. But enough of the chit chat, let's get right into the tutorial. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel Schiffer. I make videos here on YouTube all about filmmaking, whether that be tutorials or reviews. So if you're into that stuff, then I highly recommend that you subscribe. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. But let's get into this. So once you've downloaded the file link down below, you're going to want to unzip it, open a new finder window, type in movies, open the folder, go to motion templates, and drag the new folder into titles. I'm not going to do this because I've already done it, but once you've done that, you will see this adjustment folder in your titles, which comes with your base correction and your look grade. And as this tutorial progresses, you will understand how these both work. So the first step to color grading in a video is to identify which shot is your hero shot. Basically, this means you need to find the clip that you're going to base the rest of the video around. Now, obviously, you can make adjustments in each clip to make it work, but you need a clip that will act as your starting point so that everything else can follow suit. For me, I'm going to be using this clip because we do have some skin tones and we have the same lighting that'll be consistent throughout a lot of this video. These are the things you should look for when you're trying to identify your hero shot. So once you have the clip in your timeline, you're going to go ahead and drag in your base correction adjustment layer. Just lay it over top of your footage. And from here, you can add the color correction video effect to the adjustment layer, and this brings in a new color board adjustment. So this first color board adjustment is going to be our exposure correction. We're going to go into the color board and open the exposure tab, and I'm briefly going to explain what each of these controls do. To the very left, we have our global slider. This will affect the overall exposure of every aspect of our shot, including the shadows, midtones, and highlights. These sliders within this window right here get more specific because we can individually adjust our shadows, midtones, and highlights respectively. The shadows represent the darkest points of your shot, while the highlights represent the brightest parts of your image, and the midtones is everything in between. But in order to do that, we need some guide that we could work off of. Final Cut has this great feature. If you hit Command 7, it opens this window where you can view scopes. I'm not going to talk too much about scopes, but the one we're going to be using today is called the Luma Waveform. Basically, you want to make sure you're on the waveform scope in the Luma channel. And here we actually get a visual representation of how exposed each part of our clip is. So a general rule you probably want to follow is to bring your shadows down to almost zero IRE, not quite touching that zero line because once we hit that line and go below zero, we are going to be losing data in the shadows and we do not want that. We don't want our shadows to go quite down to a complete black, but very close. As for our highlights, this is up for debate. A lot of people say you want to keep it under 100, but I prefer to go up as much as I can until I start losing data. As you can see at the top of the window here, when it starts to flatten out, that's how you know you're losing data. So I go up until just before that begins to happen. So right around there looks good to me. And for your reference, my shadows are at negative 7% and my highlights are now at 9%. I'm going to close this color board and then I'm going to hit Command 7 again to close this window and we can view what we've done so far. Here is the shot we started with and after our exposure correction we have this. What this has done is added a bit of contrast to our footage, made it a little bit more punchy and exciting, so we're off to a good start. The next step is to bring in another color correction effect and drag that into our base correction. And this second correction is going to be our white balance correction, basically solving any color cast that we might have or if we incorrectly white balanced in camera, this is where we're going to fix that. So we're going to open the color board and go to our color panel. And again, we have our global control as well as our shadows, midtones, and highlights. For basic color correction in our white balance, we don't have to worry about the shadow 
shadows, midtones, and highlights. Rather, we can just affect the global adjustment. And something I noticed about this shot is that it looks a little bit cooler than I want it to. I want to warm it up a bit because I do want it to have that summery vibe. So what I'm going to do is where it says 110 degrees, I'm going to click and drag down until my global slider is in that red orange area. And as you can see, nothing has happened yet because we're still at 0%. From here, I'm going to click and drag up to introduce some warmness to the shot. And I think I'm going to stop at around 5%. The difference is very subtle, but if I click on and off here, you can actually see that we have in fact warmed up our shot. It's not quite as blue and cold looking as it was previously. So that is how you do a basic color correction in Final Cut Pro 10, but I know that most people want to add a look or a grade to their shot to bring a nice vibe or cool feeling to their footage and really tie the whole video together as a whole. But before we do that, we have to make sure that we do our basic color correction to every clip in the video so that they all match each other so that when we do add our grade, we can nicely lay it over and all of the clips in the video will flow and not look drastically different from one another. So in my example here, I have three clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this base correction and drag it till the end. I'm going to click B to bring in my blade tool and I'm going to cut in between these clips. Now I've divided my base correction into three separate segments, one for each clip, and I'm going to adjust these other two clips to make sure that they're properly balanced and exposed. So starting with this clip here, I'm going to turn off my color correction too. That would be my white balance correction and I'm going to adjust my exposure, bring up those scopes, and as you can see, I'm way underexposed. So I'm going to bump up these highlights a whole bunch. And like I said, just before we start losing data, and I'm even going to bring these shadows up a little bit. And as you can see, we're much brighter now, looking a lot better. So this is what I was talking about, that you don't want to just add the same base correction to the entire video. You want to adjust each clip individually because not every clip is going to be exposed the same. The same goes for white balance. If we turn this on here, my skin is actually looking a little bit green to me. So I'm going to take the slider and move it just a bit to the left away from green. And I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to repeat the process for this last clip. So now that all three clips are properly exposed in white balance, I can go ahead and add a look grade over top of all three clips. I'm going to go back to that first clip or hero shot, and I'm going to start adding a stylistic look to this video. I'm going to drag on my color correction effect onto this adjustment layer, open the color board, and I'm going to start with saturation. I'm going to turn up my global saturation about 46%. I really want to avoid oversaturating my skin tone, so I'm going to take my midtones and bring those down about negative 15% to counteract that global saturation. So if we turn this correction off and on, you can see we've added a good amount of saturation, adding some vibrance to the shot. I'm pretty happy with how it looks and I would probably leave it at this, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna boost the saturation even more so we could really see the difference. So I'm gonna push the global saturation to about 50. The next thing we're gonna do is go into the color board and go into our color tab and play around with the different hues and tones that we can introduce to our shot. A very common look in film is the teal and orange look. I'm not gonna overdo it, but I'm gonna use this basic concept of complementary colors and color contrast to add a dynamic look to the video. Before I do that, I'm briefly gonna explain how this color board works. Along the X axis or horizontal axis, the colors change from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and then red once again basically all the colors of the rainbow. And then on our up and down or Y axis, we are able to adjust the intensity of these colors based on the channel that we will be adjusting them in. For example, if I take my global slider and push it up into red, you can see that most of the shot, shadows, midtones, and highlights now have a red hue to it. As I start dragging this across, you will see it goes into orange, followed by yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, purple, and red. I'm going to hit that button up here to reset, and I'm going to start adjusting these channels to get the desired look we're going for. I'm going to begin introducing teal into my shot by taking the shadows and pushing up in this teal region. It's looking a little too green for me, so I'm actually going to move it to the right a little bit away from green. I think that looks a bit better. Now we're going to take our midtones, and I'm going to click and drag down so that they slide into the orange region. And from here, I'm going to start lifting up and adjusting it until I'm happy with the level of orange that we have. Now you can see our overall shot is looking very green. I'm going to take my global slider and I'm going to bring it down in this green channel to remove that green look. And it's already looking a lot better. The issue I'm having now is that we have all this pink in the highlights. So I'm going to take the highlight slider, move it into the pink area and pull it downward to take pink out of the highlights. I'm going to continue making minor adjustments until I'm happy with how everything looks. So I've made some adjustments and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. You can take note of the numbers I have down here. And because we made that initial base correction on each one of our clips, if I click through, you can see that our look is consistent throughout our video. 
The last step I would make with this color grade is to go into our exposure and lift up our shadows so that we introduce this faded cinematic look and then bring down the midtone slightly just to bring back some contrast. And I think that looks pretty good. And now that you are done your color grade, there are some optional things that you could do, like adding a vignette. I'm gonna add it directly onto my adjustment layer. I'm gonna remove the blur, turn up the fall off all the way, turn the darken down to about 0.5 and make it a bit smaller. And lastly, another optional step is to add a letterbox. This also adds a bit of a cinematic vibe, but again, totally optional. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you follow these steps and practice them, I guarantee you, you will get a lot better at color grading. And when you get to the point that this feels limiting for you, you can go ahead and consider downloading a plugin like Color Finale where you have a lot more freedom to adjust your footage, but don't be afraid to challenge yourself and try out different things. You don't have to follow what I did exactly. You can use this knowledge to come up with your own looks and your own styles. And on that note, if you enjoyed the video, then please hit it with a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below of what videos you guys would like to see in the future. I would love to hear some of your ideas, but that's it for today, guys. And until next time, peace.